Morning guys, Teddy here, welcome to Teddy Games, and today we are talking about image effects and making our awesome game jam game look even cooler. To all those who participated in the game jam, congratulations, it is finally over and you've probably uploaded some awesome projects by now, I haven't actually seen or played any of them, and because of this, we're going to be talking about some stuff that I was doing, but since you already have access to the game, since I have to have submitted it, beforehand I didn't think this one through as you can probably tell right now we're going to go into our software of choice which is unity and we have imported all the post-processing stuff and we also have uh, a skybox ready and um, some water as well why am I describing it to you you guys can see it <laughs> just ignore the howdy in the bottom left corner I've already made a few of the assets including a lot of the post-processing that I'm going to work on later but right now we're going to do a little bit of a tutorial here for you guys right now we are going to take a look at that directional light and the way that I've done this is actually make it flip itself so that the light is facing the player from the backdrop which means everything in the foreground is actually going to have a silhouette to it everything in the background is kind of going to get wrapped around by this light that's pretty much the way I wanted it anyway. This is a very artsy game despite the pixelated models. Uh, yeah, we're actually going to create a nice skybox, which I've already created the skybox, um, and we're going to make it blend into the environment. And as you come forward, you're gonna get a nice depth of field. Things in the background are blurry, things in the foreground are blurry, and things in the very mid range are nice and crisp and clear. And, and that's where the action actually takes place. So with that directional light, the shadows are already blasting this way. We know which direction we want the sun from. And I've already added the skybox just now. And the skybox looks a little something like this. So the way I did this was actually take an image of a sunrise um, because I'm not too good with colors. And anyway, I used the eyedropper tool to get the correct color so that I can blend it myself. And I just painted over the entire thing. So there's about one brush stroke and one big brush stroke. And it kind of blends as you come into the middle. And then of course I did a little bit of land and then there was red coming out. So I just did a bit of red. Now, what I did after this, because we are in a pixelated sort of world, I actually just used the mosaic feature and just overlay the entire image with a mosaic filter. It's almost like it's already being made into a vignette, which is kind of what I was gonna add in the end anyway, so this is just going to make it a lot deeper and stronger. We've got the skybox up, we've actually got the shadows cast, and now we want to fiddle around with the color effects and images and try and get a bit of blurriness and all that type of yummy stuff. So we've just added two things. We've added the post-processing layer and of course the post-processing volume. Now the layer is particularly important because you actually select which layers get affected by the post-processing. So we are going to just select everything even though it recommends not selecting everything then we can add anti-aliasing i don't necessarily like this it does blur the image a lot but that's what it's supposed to do it's actually supposed to round the edges since we are in a pixelated world do we really need it i don't think so we're going to of course enable ambient occlusion and then we're going to increase the intensity uh actually maybe not the intensity we'll increase the radius yeah we'll increase the radius so that there's nice darkness where the objects cluster so I've also increased the intensity and this just gives us a nice kind of, it puts shadows where there are objects, essentially. When two objects touch each other, it pretty much casts a shadow in that corner, which you get naturally anyway. Now we have the post-processing volume. The first thing we want to do is tick its global. Then we want to create a new profile. Just click new. Now we can add all the effects that we want and by default it comes with auto exposure, bloom, chromatic abbreviation, color grading, depth of field, grain, motion blur, vignette. First thing I want to do is add bloom. This thing just is does wonders. I'm just going to select all and I'm going to increase the intensity of that bloom so that it kind of springs out. It gives a bit of fogginess into that background. It's already starting to look really good. So my intensity is at eight right now. I can turn my threshold down a little bit, but then it gets far too strong. So I'm going to leave that threshold at one. Um, I'm going to take a look. Uh, diffusion is another good one because diffusion is how far around the object. So if you have a bright light and then you have an object in front of it, how does that light kind of curve around the outside? I like the effect of it curving around, but I don't want too much to make it kind of lose its effect. So I'm going to just leave it at around five, about midway. And when it comes to color, of course, this is extremely important. Right now it's at white. I don't want white light. I want it to have an orange sort of morning feel. So I'm going to increase that to probably directly orange. And what that does now is that in the corners of the objects, as the light curves around it, it's an orange light that's kind of um, seeping in through the outside of these objects. If you look at those trees, you can see it seeping in. 
It also complements the sun extremely well. So we got a nice look going on here. Now there are a few default textures for lens dirtiness, but I am actually, yeah, I'll, I might as well use some. They look really good when you add them on. I think I, yeah, I kind of like this first one a lot better. So I've added a bit of lens dirt and you can notice that you can change the intensity. This is pretty much the dirt that you get on something like a camera lens. When you shine it into the sun, you can actually see the dirt. I would not recommend shining your camera into the sun though. I'm going to leave it a little bit intense, but not too intense. So you can see that on the right hand side, we're getting a lot more than the left hand side. This is because there is more light coming from the right hand side than there is the left. I'm going to add another effect. I think that's pretty much it for the bloom. Um, we can always change it later. I might as well go for depth of field right now. So first of all, I'm going to change the aperture down so that there's quite a lot of blur. So as you can see, this depth of field is a little bit too intense. It's too intense on the front end more than the back end. And we can change this using our focal length. I'm sorry, not focal length, focal distance. Focal length actually changes the range of, we'll say, clearness or how close the blurriness is to each other. If we are going for, let's say, a distance of five meters, we want it to focus on that five meters and everything beyond it is not going to be in focus. We kind of want that focal length to kind of spread it out because we want to be able to focus on this entire character's walk range and he can walk towards the camera or away from the camera. We don't want him blurring when he gets too close and we don't want him blurring when he gets too far. It's going to make it a rather large, uh, what do you call it, focal length. So there we go, I really like that. You get a very heavy blur on the end trees. You get a sort of mild blur on the trees as they come closer. And then of course, with the grass in front, you get a little bit of a blur as you're moving. This is gonna be perfect for the game. That's pretty much it. I'm going to leave it at that. We've got focus distance 7.33. We've got aperture 0 0.6 and of course focal length 37. However, this changes depending on your game. Don't take my numbers and just copy and paste them. It's not gonna work like that. You have to think about it a lot. You have to make changes. Now I'm going to move on to another thing that's extremely important, which is grain. Now, whenever you're getting that sort of film look, you really want the grain in there. It doesn't have to be intense. It just needs to be present. And what it does is it, it gives it a more lifelike feel. I know, yes, pixelated game. Yes, bloody light, the last night theme. For the intensity, we're just going to turn it up to the max so we can see how big our grain actually is. I'm going to turn it down a little bit, the size wise. Um, and then of course like that, that's perfect. So in the darker shadows, you're able to see it a lot more. Um, I might turn the size down even more to that. That's brilliant. And now we're going to change the intensity back down to around halfway. Now on YouTube, you guys probably can't actually see this, but I can definitely see it. It's extremely detailed. When it comes to filming, grain actually comes from the dark spots. So when your camera is unable to actually get a decent image because of lack of light, it actually creates this thing called grain where it's trying to predict what the actual color is. This often happens when you put gain on your image to try and brighten up a scene that is too dark for the film to actually capture in crisp, clear quality. It's always grain in film, so when we want to get our nice look, we're always going to use that. Great, so now we've got bloom, we've got grain, and we've got depth of field. Next up, we are going to, nah, motion blur? Nah, no motion blur. The camera moves nice and smoothly. I don't think it needs motion blur. We're gonna go ahead and add a vignette and I like to keep it, of course, at a very dark black color. And then of course, we're going to increase the intensity. Oh my God, that is way too intense. So we're going to increase the smoothness and then we're going to decrease the intensity so that it only just gets in our image. And then I'll decrease the smoothness so you can barely see it. It's kind of just focusing our attention down into the very center. That's actually it. I really like that effect right now. It's pretty much perfect. That's cool. Um, we can always change it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Now, I always say chromatic abbreviation, but it's chromatic aberration. Is it worth it in a game that's on a farm? I don't think so. We want that warm color. It's kind of, it becomes a little bit electronic and modern and techno-y when you kind of get that, although they do use it in a lot of retro stuff. However, this game takes place in the middle of nowhere and it's, I want it to look like a film, not like a, you know, cassette tape, videotape, not cassette tape. Now I hate auto exposure. Whenever the scenes change lighting, it pisses me off because my eyes do that naturally. Even on the screen, when I'm looking in the dark, everything that's brighter appears brighter. When I'm looking at the light, everything that's darker appears darker. So I believe auto exposure is kind of pointless. I'm not going to play around with that. Color grading, the best part, the most enjoyable part. Color grading, first of all, we are going to leave it on HDR. Tone mapping, don't touch. Never touch tone mapping. Always leave it at none. No one likes tone mapping. 
some people might like tone mapping. Now for our temperature, we can of course raise it into the oranges and we get a lovely golden sea. I know it's extreme, but remember that orange is kind of the theme, it's kind of what we want to see. So if we brighten that all the way up, then we only get the warm colors of everything. So we can actually leave that at 100. We'll see what it looks like when we add all the other stuff. Now of course you got post exposure, we can increase this, we can decrease this. Now if we decrease it, it looks like it's going into nighttime, I don't like that. I want to leave it at zero so it looks like the sun is coming out. Bother with the color filter, not gonna bother with the hue shift and with the saturation, I, hmm, nah, I'm not, I'm not actually gonna touch that. Now when it comes to contrast, is a little bit iffy because I don't know what the gameplay is actually going to look like when it's got contrast on it. If we do it too much, our characters might appear too dark. If we do it too little, it becomes, again, a little bit saturated. We can turn it off, it looks very nice, but it looks so stylized, it's almost taken out of the actual context of the game. We're losing a lot of the awesome colors as well that we want. Now we're moving on to the best part. We don't want to play around with red, green, and blue. We're going to play around with the trackballs, pretty much the exact same thing, except they work in different ways. So when it comes to gain, we kind of get that mid-tones, uh, to the sort of um, outside area it was going to become and then of course our lift is our shadows our really dark shadows so it's pretty much going to create what is going to overlay these shadows what color do we want one of the best things that I learned from Sam and Nico actually was to contrast colors by going opposite each other so when it comes to color grading I'm actually going to drag the lift in the opposite direction of or yellowy sort of orange now we have this really extreme blue tone we can tone it down a little bit not too much because we we kind of want to keep that i don't know how this shows up on youtube but the dark shades are pretty damn blue our temperature is overpowering the entire scene so we go might turn that down just a little bit not too much around 70 80. when it comes to gain i'm going to turn it up to a yellowy sort of orange so we get sort of you know keep that background kind of blooming out into our faces the gamma has a lot of intensity to it so i'm just going to drag it a little bit up towards the red I don't think I'm going to touch it from now on. That is the color grade done. Now we can see what it actually looks like if we press play. So that's pretty much it for me today guys, hopefully you learnt a little bit and you decide to use a lot more post-processing inside your games, and of course if you want to check out my game in the Game Jam, you can see something like this, it should be done by now. Well it has to be done by the time this video is actually released, so. Thank you all for watching, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow when we talk about something cool, hopefully, please. How to convey a story, which you guys will know what I'm talking about if you go and actually play the games on itch.io and then play my game. Make sure you guys give feedback to everyone, it is extremely important for their careers to get feedback on what they're doing well, what they're doing badly, all that type of stuff. This also includes me, give me decent feedback, I'm not too sure how this, this is the first time I've ever done a story, so tomorrow when we talk about the story, I'm going to teach you how I kind of went about it, obviously it's not the best way in the world, but hey, I'm not perfect, this channel isn't perfect, and I'll see you next time.